हेलो स्टूडेंट्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग चैप्टर इलेवन एज यूजल कंटिन्यूस एंड दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर थ्री इन द सेम चैप्टर चैप्टर इलेवन दैट इज द ह्यूमन आई एंड द कलरफुल वर्ल्ड if you can remember in first two lecture we discussed about internal structure of i and we also discussed about various defects of vision okay our today's topic in lecture number 3 is not a huge topic but we need to understand it in detail okay i will relate suppose today's topic uh, let me just write the title of the topic we are today going to study refraction of <coughs> refraction of light through prism that is our topic today i have written today's topic here and i want to relate the same topic with chapter number 1 where you discussed means we discussed about refraction of light if you can remember through glass slab why we are discussing refraction of light through prism because question may arise in your mind because ultimately glass slab is also made up of glass transparent glass material only so prism is also made up of transparent glass material only so question may arise in our mind that why are we discussing this topic so first let me clarify we have discussed what happens to light ray when it passes from air to glass slab and emerges out from glass slab to air why we are discussing refraction of light through prism is there any connection between these two i must first clear it what is the difference in discussion so in glass slab if you can remember in glass slab both the refracting surface suppose simply a glass slab in glass slab both the interfaces what ya che both the interfaces means both the refracting surfaces are parallel to each other if you can remember okay light ray was initially traveling in air entered in glass emerged out in air it refracted twice but both the refracting interface are parallel to each other when we are studying refraction of light in prism let us try to understand prism first 
तो एक्चुअली प्रिजम फर्स्ट टाइम जस्ट ड्रॉइंग द सिंपल डायग्राम और प्रिजम इज एक्चुअली ट्राइंगुलर इन सेप अल्टीमेटली इट इज ऑल्सो अ ग्लास मटीरियल ओनली अंडरस्टेन्ड हियर वॉट आई वॉन्ट टू क्लेरिफाई इज देट सपोज आई नेम पी क्यू आर सपोज आज नाम आप पी क्यू और पी आर हियर लाइट रे सपोज दिस इज एर एर एंड दिस इज ग्लास एज यूजल यू नो तो लाइट रे एंटर फ्रॉम एर टू ग्लास ग्लास टू एर तो बोथ द रिफ्रेक्टिंग इंटरफेस दिस इज वन एर टू ग्लास सेपरेटिंग एर एंड ग्लास एंड दिस इज अनदर ग्लास टू एर here what you can see what is the difference can you say me yes anybody here both the refracting interface means both the refracting surfaces are parallel to each other here both the refracting surface are inclined that is the difference both the refracting surface are inclined by some angle and this angle actually by which both the refracting surface are inclined is also known as prism angle or we call it angle of prism ami bolu प्रिजम एंगल और एंगल ऑफ प्रिजम सो अंडरस्टूड द डिफरस क्वेश्चन तो थे क्वेश्चन में अराइज इन अवर माइंड वाई वी आर डिस्कसिंग रिफ्रेक्शन ऑफ लाइट थ्रू ग्लास वी ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड देन वाई वी नीड टू डिस्कस रिफ्रेक्शन ऑफ लाइट थ्रू प्रिजम यू अंडरस्टूड द डिफरस हियर बोथ द रिफ्रेक्टिंग सरफेसिस were parallel here both the refracting surfaces are inclined we want to understand by experiment that even when refracting surface are parallel or inclined do they follow the same laws of refraction we have studied if you can remember both the laws of refraction let me remind yaad che first bolo to the incident ray the normal and the refracted ray to the interface at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane second law snell's law can you remember the ratio of speak the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always remains constant two law you have already studied regarding refraction and you want to we want to confirm it or we want to become certain that if the light ray refracts to two interface which are inclined at some angle will follow the same rules of refraction or not understand so let us try to understand the refraction of light through prism okay now Uh, so you must have understood why i am targeting and why i explained you and why the necessity <coughs> essentiality of this topic why we are studying refraction of light through prism okay let us try to understand one experiment of prism 
right one activity regarding glass slab we have already studied if you can remember now we are studying activity of refraction of light through prism prism we all have seen and we all know prism is a i do not need to draw here prism is a triangular solid piece of glass like a glass slab was in prism there are two at the front and back are triangular base and it has suppose this way and a niche a triangle and a patch of two triangular base and three lateral rectangular surfaces means faces so prism has two triangular base and three rectangular lateral faces let us try to perform an experiment where we are going to rest the prism on a plane surface in such a way that it's one of the triangular base rest on the table let us perform the experiment like in glass slab this board is table white board and a white sheet of paper has been spread on has been spreaded on this table let me take one prism okay let us take prism just make some good diagram with me this is prism we are drawing some big diagram i will draw to understand it this is prism okay i have kept the prism on the white sheet of paper so that is one of the triangular base will rest let me draw the boundary of the prism as a b c this is the boundary of the prism i have already drawn looking okay hmm. okay straight line right now <clears throat> just like in glass slab we i have drawn the boundary of the prism already just uh, first you draw one inclined line okay which is meeting ab refracting surface at some point suppose i say e now take two pins understand and insert them on this line suppose one pin i may call it p and another pin i may call it q two pins are inserted here two pins are inserted here on this inclined line meeting the refracting surface ab at point e okay now what you have to do like in glass slab try to visualize the image of pin p and q from other side of the prism and insert pin r and s in such a way pins or nails that the image of p and q and r s looks in the same line 
एक्जाम में डायग्राम करो तरह ध्यान आप दो फर्स्ट आ स्लाइट डॉटेड लाइन दिस वे अनदर डॉटेड लाइन पे फर्स्ट यू हेव टू ड्रॉ अंडरस्टेन्ड ए फर्स्ट यू हेव टू ड्रॉ एंड नाव हियर यू आर इंसर्टिंग द टू पिन्स रियल एक्सपेरिमेंट व्याज आर एन एस understand the diagram can look proper so we have seen we have tried to sing from other side okay and insert a nail rns in such a way that nail rns and image of pin p and q looks on the same line after just remove pin rns and draw a line passing through it okay it is meeting refracting surface ac at point f now just remove the prism and join this line like dotted up the understanding matter now join it okay so we got the path of light when it is traveling from prism for us pq is the incident ray ef is the refracted ray and rs understand is the emergent ray after this much diagram is drawn we are drawing two normals normal as you know always perpendicular to reflecting surface normal suppose i may call n and dash normal drawn at point e suppose i draw another normal here okay and i say it draw karo m m dash okay so just try to understand one angle is formed here between incident ray and normal this angle as you know is called angle of incidence i angle formed between refracted ray and normal this is called angle of refraction r again the refraction take place at the interface ac also ahiya pan here also again the refraction take place means the ray emerges out from glass to air understand so again you can say it undoubtedly angle of incidence but sometimes we write r because both are equal and when the ray emerges out again one angle forming here which we call e angle of emergence after drawing this just try to extend incident ray in its original direction and also extend emergent ray in its original direction backward both the rays are meeting here at point d and here one angle is formed which may call angle of deviation this is called actually angle of deviation i am not writing all other name that you know angle of incidence refraction this is angle of emergence 
E that is angle of emergence. Now the activity has been done, experiment is over. We have drawn all outline necessary, we have labeled it. Okay, now let us try to just summarize and analyze. Two refracting surface AB and AC interface inclined at some angle, angle can be 45, 90, 60, whatever, which is called the prism angle. PQ or you can say PE, QE, this is incident ray. N and S is the normal at interface AB. EF is refracted ray. MM dash is the normal at refracting surface AC. Angle of refraction, again angle of incidence and then angle of emergence. FR, FS or RS can be called emergent ray. We extended, extended incident ray in its original direction. And we extended backward emergent ray in its original direction. Both the rays are meeting at point D and forming an angle which we call angle of deviation. Okay, we'll discuss just now what is actually the angle of deviation means. Okay, now, first loss of refraction, obviously, angle of incidence, uh, sorry, incident ray, refracted ray, and normal at the means to the interface at the point of incidence all lie in the same plane. First law is exactly followed. Second law, same. Angle of incidence and angle of refraction, if you remember that law, prism follows the same rule. The sign of means the ratio of sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction always remains constant. Both the laws are followed. One more thing which you should see here is that let us try to study the path of light ray. Can you see that? It looks like C. Incident ray, if there would not be prism, would have been, would, uh, will be traveling in this direction. Incident ray, in case there might not be the prism, will be traveling in this direction but because of prism instead of traveling in this direction it bends this way mean it was initially going this way and now bend towards the normal you see means light ray when travel from air to glass yakaro in glass layer bends towards normal follows the same rule light ray traveling from air to glass bends towards normal come here now now actually incident ray while going from glass to air if you extend its original direction it has to go this way Understand? But instead of going, see the position of normal, it actually has to propagate or travel in this way. See the normal. But instead of traveling this way, it bends this way. Means it moved away from the normal. 
that means it follows the same rule that light ray when travel from air to glass that means from rarer medium to denser medium bends towards normal and when from glass to air bends away from the normal okay one more thing which you need to understand actually what is angle of deviation so actually angle of deviation means how will you define it so angle formed between incident ray and emergent ray this is incident ray and emergent ray is called angle of deviation that actually you can call it that angle of not down kari bola what is angle of deviation speak out bolo so angle of deviation means the angle formed between incident ray when we extended incident ray in this direction and emergent ray is called angle of deviation and actually angle of deviation gives the measure of the angle by which barabar try to understand what i speak just try to understand it angle of deviation is actually a measure of angle by which samajho angle of deviation is actually the degree measure of angle by which incident ray bends to form emergent ray samjhayu what angle of deviation is actually the measure of angle by which incident ray due to prism bends to form emergent ray that is called angle of deviation understand can be asked in one line what is angle of deviation to so angle between incident ray and emergent ray is called angle of deviation actually angle of deviation is the angle by which incident ray bends to form emergent ray okay so this is experiment about prism and this is a good experiment given in textbook and in material also you have to understand it in detail right so that that is confirmed that when light ray falls uh, when light ray pass from prism it is going to be refracted twice understand what happens if the white light is incident on prism just try to understand <clears throat> just take an example or uh, can we draw one another figure here only uh, this is already a figure this is already we understood refraction of light let us try to understand one more thing light ray this is what we are discussing in a so in a small diagram that is dispersion of light if you allow suppose this is prism we all know that the light get refracted twice when emerges out of the prism suppose you allow white light to fall on the prism so obviously white light <coughs> when allowed to fall on the prism understand it get refracted we all know that white light is made up of seven color okay and every color travel with different velocity so what happens white light refracts through prism understand and if you keep a screen here 
suppose you have kept a screen here so you will see a spectrum of seven color that is vibgyor you all know this this is not uh, so new for you understand you will see a spectrum of seven color on the screen that is called splitting of white light or dispersion of white light we call it dispersion of white light violet at the bottom red at the top means violet refracts maximum barabar samjho violet refracts maximum and red light refracts minimum this is also one of the objective in your textbook so out of the seven color light whose refraction becomes maximum through prism <coughs> violet and whose refraction minimum red light actually because white light is made up of seven color how can you again prove it so take two prism suppose i take a uh, just understand a one prism and i keep another prism this way two prism suppose i have taken white light falls it will split into seven color okay so this is v and r we are not writing all color now another prism is kept in totally inverted position so it falls here and refracts and will emerges out again as a white light so white light is made up of seven color okay so you understood this this is called dispersion of light or we call it splitting of white light and as you know it's a general knowledge and you all know also that the refract uh, <coughs> what topic we discussed is related with the one of the famous natural phenomenon which we see most in raining rainy season monsoon season or you will also see if you are standing in front of a uh, uh, suppose uh, water fountain and sun is at back you may sometimes visualize rainbow understand mostly rainbow is seen in uh, um, monsoon season exactly on the opposite direction of the sun the same thing occurs every rain drop every rain drop behaves like a prism suppose i draw just one rain drop here uh, not necessary one to uh, just to be erase it but suppose a rain drop just take an example a rain drop is there it behaves like a prism so when light uh, when uh, light falls on prism here it get uh, it looks like a prism it behaves like a prism actually it is rain drop and what happens light ray refracts then internal reflection take place and again when come out refraction take place so thai ahiya first refraction then total internal refraction then refraction and you will see a band of seven color in the sky okay all color are not visualized distinctly when you see the uh, when you see the rainbow formation understand but you see a beautiful color rainbow in the sky right that is the phenomenon occurring on account of this only okay so try to understand the rainbow formation also occur in the same way every rain drop behaves like a prism you understood this right so one more thing and a rainbow is always observed exactly on the opposite side in the morning the sun rises in the east so you will be able to see the rainbow on the west side and at the evening when the sun is setting in the west you are able to visualize the rainbow understand on the east side exactly on the opposite side the rainbow can be visualized by us understand <clears throat> so try to understand uh, one more thing this is about the rainbow formation okay prism dispersion of light and this is how by keeping two prism you can say that the white light split into seven colored light and they again recombine and forms a white light 
this is a proof that the white light is made up of white light is made up of seven colored light okay so dear student today's topic was we can't move to the next topic and we can't combine because atmospheric refraction is a totally different topic and we do not want to combine this topic in today's lecture okay but today we studied refraction of light today we studied rainbow formation dispersion of white light understand means splitting of white light into seven color that also we studied okay so before we end up today's lecture as far as i uh, i analyze we are able to complete this chapter mostly in five or six lectures mostly understand so topic clear homework for today's lecture this is homework okay for today's lecture first note down describe an experiment to study refraction of light through glass slab first describe refraction of light through prism okay first question should i speak again describe refrac means ex describe experiment to study refraction of light through prism that is first question in homework today second one what is dispersion of light what is dispersion of light explain with experiment like screen and all we discussed given in material in textbook itself both simple experiment so what is dispersion of light explain by experiment third one today write a short note on rainbow that is short note number 3 in today's homework so i speak again first describe refraction of light through prism experiment second what is dispersion of light explain third write a short note on the rainbow so today's topic three short note for homework complete homework in neat and clean writing and submit to associate in time okay diagram must be very clear thank you very much from bharat sir chotri